yeah, I think we're good. So I'd just like to welcome everyone here tonight. Um, just a GA talk, LinkedIn with Farm Safety in conjunction with GATacticsBoard.com. Um, so a few guests tonight. We have Darren Hughes, Monaghan midfielder. Um, I would have played with Darren myself for most of my career, 12 years. I think we were teammates together. So Darren's a dairy farmer in Scotstown in North Monaghan. Tommy Dornan's our next a farming guest and GA player guest as well. Um, I know Tommy 10, 15 years now. I taught Tommy in secondary school in Ardy Community School. I'd be good friends with his brother. And his home club would be the Westerns in County Loud. And he's moved to Enniskeen Club in County Monaghan in recent years due to low playing numbers in his club in Town. And our last man is from Kilimatra in in County Cork, Noel's a former All Ireland winning uh, wing back for Cork, and I would have marked Noel on numerous occasions. I was only talking up tonight. I think I marked him in Castle Blaney in Scotstown in Park Erin and in Crow Park as well in a in a National League final. So thanks for joining us tonight, lads. Um, so we'll start off. We'll start off with Darren. Um, farming background, Darren. Um, what do you farm and who do you farm with? Well, lads, um, farming, uh, dairy farming here at home, uh, 120 acres, milking 110 cows on a robotic system, uh, two two Lely robots, um, full full spring cabin herd, um, yeah. So that's that's the main background. Uh, here with me dad at home in a partnership with dad, at home here now, probably ten years at home here now, full time. Um, had went to university in Jordanstown previously and done a business degree before I thought I wanted to be a dairy farmer so I uh, done it tried the walk and world didn't like it and thought home wasn't that bad so uh, come back went to Bally Hayes then done me uh, level six there uh, green cert and um, that's home since now good stuff good stuff yeah I was in your yard once or twice I seen that your robotic system you have a new calf feeder system in as well yeah, in, uh, put in a feeding set calf feeder this year JFC calf feeder so I was only thinking the day before the talk that it probably would lead. Is it a safer system when you have it all automatic that you don't have to be handling cows twice a day or whatever? When it does, it, I presume safer. Uh, is it safer? It probably is um, safer on me. Uh, less less risk of wear and tear. But uh, yeah, probably in hindsight, it, it probably it leaves the thing safer. And we'll be looking at at what I've done over the years of where we come from, where the farm was when I was young and with with young children now myself um there's things i done when i was younger and i wouldn't like them to be to be exposed to it at farm level now so just trying to to make the thing as I suppose as safe as possible and as uh, from the work element from a labor point of view making it uh, as efficient as possible okay yeah good stuff um yeah no so it's farm safety week this week so we just said we'd have a chat on near misses um, and your own farm, Darren, had you many near misses over the years? Any close ones, machinery, cattle, or your dad, or anyone? And did you just change it after it? Or could people who see this now learn it and from us going forward? I could, here, there's always what I there probably has been a lot of near misses that I wouldn't classify that somebody else might classify as near misses. But yeah, probably the closest one was um, calving a cow one time when I was taking the calf out from in under the gate and was just throwing me, it was coming up over the top of the gate, pulling my last leg over it and cow come behind me and helped me up over the gate. Nice to hear. If it had been a second earlier and I wasn't on the top of the gate, God knows where, where it would have been. But then it's just to be that awareness around calving time. Like you, you always think you're aware, but you know, I torn me back for that split second. And uh, as I say, luckily enough, I was at the top of the gate and, and the cow just helped me on over. Um, here, as I said earlier, you're always trying to make things safer and easier. Like even to go as far as just having having all gates swinging and all latches working. That like just simple wee things and um, around the machinery, shafts, just making sure everything's as, as safe as possible. Um, but I suppose that the cow incident was the was probably the, the nearest miss personally. We had a we had a bad fire on farm here. In, in 2017 that here we lost a few animals it, it could have been a lot worse there was a lot, a lot of shed damage in that but um with 
with the smoke that was being exposed to personnel on site at the time before the, the fire brigades and that um landed, it it probably could have been a whole lot worse and just it it's um heightened our awareness towards being being prepared for scenarios like that in the future. So it did. I can re- I can remember that we were training in Clahan, that's the county grounds we were yeah. and I don't know if it was a training camp or it was no, we were training that night and I actually I was not training, I just a text Maliki that evening, like and he, you know, yourself what he's like, he says you do it, you have to do it home, like yeah. and, but I can remember just, whatever it was, it was like choose where else to buy a Kieran wasn't there either. I don't think it was like choose where else to two uses and the ward come out. No one really saying much, you know, the fire at the didn't know if it was a fire at the house or the farm, yeah, but we knew there was trouble at home or whatever. But um yeah, fire safety to be another big one too. Um no, good stuff, good stuff, Darren. Yeah, but I, I clicked on it, it was the IFA website the other day, and in tractors is the most fatalities and vehicles linked, and number two is live, uh, could be livestock, and you'd be automatically thinking it would be a bull, would be dangerous, most deaths, but it's actually cows. So uh, cow after giving birth or whatever can be very dangerous. All right. Um. Okay, we'll go to, we'll go to Tommy next. Tommy, yeah, your farming background, beef farmer in Reastown in Loud. And tell us a bit about that. And then we'll link in had you any near misses on safety. Yeah, as you said, a beef farm, a farmer from Loud. So we have about 60 cattle on about 75 acres, um, all grassland. And um, so we're fattening cattle, fattening cattle to kill. And um, so getting a farming alongside my father both part-time, so I'm working full-time, he has a January service, so um, yeah, look, it's a, it's a great enjoyment for me, it's definitely, probably over the years, um, it's kind of good good to get a, get away from maybe the football in the background, you go out and play in the fields and different things like that, but um, no, like, as I said, growing up, it was a lot of near misses, uh, maybe dad was working flat out um, at the January and we were rushing and rushing, and I think that's where a lot of the problems come, and that's when safety's missed and we didn't maybe push maybe uh, the money or investment into it where now it's kind of, we're a bit more kind of older, more experienced. We know ugh, the sustainable way to do things is the right way to do it. Like So like same as Darren, like gates, simple as gates, like we'd be loading cattle six o'clock in the morning, heading for the factory in, 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 in cabin. Like it's, it's, it's simple things like having the cattle in, have the, the gate, gate swinging, Years ago, there'd be gates tied on gates, and you'd be you'd be soon the cattle's up in the lorry, you're struggling to to get them off, and they're they're coming running at you. So no, it's a lot more. We we invest a lot more around the yard here, um, machinery wise, shed wise, facilities, crushes, different things like that, and it, it's 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 safer and it's simpler. Like so, I can go in in the morning, do a wee bit, load a few cattle, get them off. Dad, come and feed them in the evening. It makes it simpler on us, um, and the same with machinery wise. We we had a simple we Massey thirty five and the case international. But anytime you got on, I give you a problem. Um, so look, we invested a wee bit just in safe on machinery. Like when you get up on it, you know it's going to work. We and we used to have an old silage cover block. You probably take two minutes to cut around it, and maybe if it came to the corner, you'd have to get out and push for it. Now it's just no. Invest in a tra- new tractor machine, uh, new shear grab, and things are things are a lot more simple, safer, and again, you know, because look, life's busy. You have work wise, uh, family commitment wise, and and county football as well. Like so, you're 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 trying to push everything, get the most out of your day. So no, it's it's more about um putting things in place, and uh, like it might be there today you buy it, but look, it's it's. It, over time, it's 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 the right thing to do. So no, it's um it's something we've done. And look, I will be expanding. Like I work just part time, but I've got the hair number as well. I I studied at a business degree in down in Carlo, and because of that, then I was able to forward on my education then in Valley Hills. So I think it was for sixteen months night course. So I have my I have my um I have my green cert now four or five years, and it's next year now. I'm just going to apply myself. So I'll have my own hair number and it'll be new sheds going up. And yeah, uh, kind of sustainability and um, safety kind of would be my kind of what I'd be looking to go into uh, in, while well, to invest in any. Yeah. No, very interesting. And what you said there, the day, it's only day or 
the day you buy it. I think that is true in nearly every walk of life. Um, but a few interesting points there. Very interesting, Tommy. Fair play. Um, okay, Noel, we'll go on to yourself, Noel. Farming background. And I know I've got to know you in recent, in recent time. Not really we were playing, but recent time. Senior locker, Gail. And safety-wise in the farm, is it an, a desperate tragedy in your family? Um, and you might link in, so tell us a wee, a wee bit on both maybe and some of your safety stuff is might have improved over the years. Um, th th thanks for asking me on, Stephen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I suppose my background is a bit, uh, it's a bit different to the guys, I suppose, in that... Um, it's my brother really runs the farm at home. It's a soccer farm we have back at home. And um, I suppose what I tie in with the lads is I, I suppose during the day, my job is 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 as a as a sales rep there for an animal feed company here in Cork, Southern Milling. So I try and like try and win over the likes of Darren and Tommy there to, to get on board with me there. So um uh so yeah, my 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 farming background would have been kind of basic enough for you like I say my brother is the guy that runs it but um yeah I suppose just touching on I suppose the, um obviously the the Lake Regale there um I suppose going back years ago when I was younger you know I had a friend of mine there who um um you know we, we came up with the idea of doing a bit of um of contracting you know uh, near home um, with a quad and spreader and a sprayer um you know, with the view of, you know, probably soft ground and, you know, going in with a smaller vehicle. And um, I suppose it is well documented, you know, that my friend had a, a fatal accident with the quad. Um, and I suppose, you know, you, you talk about, you know, what you'd learn from it. And I suppose the biggest thing I took from it is, you know, it was a machine that we didn't respect enough. Um, that, you know, we, we probably got too used to it too soon. And, um, you know, I, I look at, you know, I suppose the likes of Darren, no one told me, you know, that might have children coming along, you know, certainly it's it's something. And I, I, I obviously in my own job, I go into a lot of yards where you have young, I suppose, aspiring dairy farmers coming up that are 17, 18 years old. And, you know, the likes of quads and these new machinery, they can get a bit excited and, you know, feel that they're a bit invincible, you know, on, on these things. But, you know, you have to be aware that, that, that you know, that they're, 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 they can be extremely dangerous at any time, you know. And not respecting a machine um, is, is, is certainly the most dangerous time of all. And, um, you know, like, that's really, I suppose, the biggest thing that I, I, I took from it. And, um, you know, <laughs> you're, you're raising awareness, obviously, this week. And I suppose that's the biggest thing I would say to to, to, to farmers, you know, that have young sons or even themselves, you know, you've got to respect the machine. Um, that's that's certainly the, the, the biggest point of it. Yeah, very interesting, Noel. Um, a friend of mine, he actually works, he's a farm manager in Ballyhays, Darren and Tommy probably know him, uh, Donald Patton. He would have taught the lads over there and does a bit of teaching or whatever in the college. But one of the they always had a quad at home in their home house, the farm. But he, he only done a, a quad handling course in recent years. And he said it was one of the best things he ever done. Was it going downhill, mm -hmm. you lean forward or up uphill, lean forward, whatever, few of the bit, I didn't even know it. But it sort of makes yep. sense when you hear it. And mm -hmm. I would have, we've, my brother has a quad over there, but we would never have done safety on it. But after yep. hearing Donald, it's something I would like to do. And probably people should do yeah. it. Possibly become become mandatory if you have a quad. Absolutely, Stephen. Like you know, that's it. You hit the nail on the head. I I I'd certainly be an advocate of all that. Um, you know, even those few things now that you pointed out there, like they were they were things that we were never told about. You know, at that time and um, certainly like if 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 those structures were in place at that time, you know, who knows? The story could have been different. You know, we don't know, but um. Certainly, I'd, I'd be advocating that all day long anyway, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, lethal, yeah. I had on the board from the other day doing it. I think, yeah, fatality, yeah. Track, tractors and vehicles, the number one killer. Um, machinery is the, yeah, machinery is the second. That'd be PTO shafts getting pulled up. You know, there was a fatality in Mead there over the summer. Bailout man pulled in or whatever, horrendous, 
So machinery, lethal. Um, livestock, that would be your, a sick cow after calving, whatever, bulls, etc. And then the last one, slurry gas, is the fourth one. So um, it's it's something, it's something, I don't know if the GA could link in with or in, in, in future years going forward, but um, I know there is a massive crossover with GA lads and farming backgrounds. Um, no, that's the quads. Another one I was going to ask you, Noel, uh, forestry work. Are you a tree surgeon by trade mm -hmm. and are you doing, do you claim every day or is there a massive danger with, with tree work? Yeah. Um, sure, I, look, I suppose that, that's kind of what I, I grew up with here in the family. We have a sawmill here at home and, um, you know, obviously working with Southern Milling is is, is, is what I do really as, as a day job. But um, we still have the, the tree surgery side uh, in the company. And yeah, I mean, any weekends or or, or or you know time off I, I do climb a lot as well you know um but again tree surgery work is an extremely dangerous job it's a very physical job and um it's no different to the farm machinery you know it it all comes down to the gear trusting the gear and 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 having the correct training done as well you know um and again i I would say, you know, it's something that probably will become mandatory in this country is obviously the use of a chainsaw. You know, I know they're clamping down a bit more on it there, but, um, you know, there probably will come a stage where you won't be able to buy a chainsaw without having a course done. And I don't see anything wrong with that, being honest with you. You know, they're, they're, they're an extremely dangerous tool. And I suppose, you know, one thing I suppose that I, I, I would, again, be advocating, you know, safety, I suppose a big thing in relation to chainsaws and, and a big... I suppose a big um, issue you have, you know, with accidents is 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 you know bad edge on a chainsaw. It's it's extremely dangerous when you have bad edge because you're forcing you're forcing the chainsaw through through the bit of timber, and um, that's when that's when things can happen, you know. So it's only a small thing, but always keep edge in your saw anyway. It's um, that's a vital part of it. But uh, like I say. Forestry, you know, similar to farming, it's it's all down to having the right gear and um, yeah, having everything spot on, really. Well, that was me own. I we farm here at home. My father, my brother, three of us at it, and yeah, suckler cows, fifteen suckler cows, whatever. Small farm. A lot of a lot of the farms in Monaghan would be small size, small scale. Mm -hmm. But two of my close misses on the farm would have been chainsaw. Um, yeah, I'll go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go. I'll give me your own pair, two personal ones. Chainsaw. I was, uh, yeah, I was only eight. I was doing me leave and cert. And similar was Tommy would say, we hadn't the right gear. We had no saw horse. And I was holding a bit of stick on the edge of a timber in the shed with the father and kicked in a knot, whipped. It was me middle. I don't know. Can you see her there? I'm not, I, I don't want to give you the fingers. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, shock, hit over, um, split the side of the middle finger, hit, hit the bone, hairline fracture. Whipped a bit of the side of the thumb, and all I could, it was my second year in the county minors, would have been a sub the first year or whatever. And all I thought was that's the end of the football championship. It was only maybe six odd weeks away. It was the first thing I thought is, geez, the football's gone now, whatever. But hospital job, lucky enough, it buffed back out. I was luck, very, very lucky. Another inch or so could have whipped a vein, you'd be in major, major trouble. So that was my own experience. A few weeks later, we had to saw a horse shorted, but it took the accident to get it. And then our other one would have been machinery. We've hilly ground, no tires in the track. They're putting out slurry early morning, 1st of February, or maybe the night before, trying to get her out, stopped on the side of the hill and couldn't get reversed back, whatever. Come back out the next morning after it freezing that night. The tractor was after sliding down the hill the whole way down towards it, but like how like just crazy and we bang next week new tires on the track. I don't know why I don't know what we were saving, but we sort of clicked. You're saving nothing like so cut cutting corners and it didn't get us anywhere like so. That was my own experience of of uh, safety sort of on the farm. Um so no a few few good points there. I'd say people will get uh, benefit or they might learn something from the four of us here tonight. So I know I'm tight for time lads. So we'll just finish off um, we'll finish off all Ireland final on Sunday, Dublin and Kerry. Uh, hard enough to call. We'll go yeah, back to Darren. I know you'll be licking your wounds 10 days ago. Monaghan were still in the championship, very close on taking Dublin out. Um, who do you think will win this Sunday, Darren? 
for me in a deep end first here, Jinx. Uh, here's going to be tight. I don't think there's going to be much in it, but I've um, been saying Dublin for a while now, so I'll, I'll stick by my guns in that one. Okay, we'll go one for the dubs. Tommy? Yeah, um, yeah, I got two big lessons in playing uh, Dublin and Kerry this year. Um, bad, bad side of the result. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, very impressed with Monaghan last week, and uh, even just the Mo- even Dublin maybe went at the best, but even just still to grind it out. So I just think there's something in Dublin, um, that they just have enough. But look, everything will come down to Clifford as well. But no, I'm I, I, I'm going to go with Dublin. Dublin on. I don't okay. think I don't think Dublin will be able to stop Clifford, but I still think they have enough to do it. No, we'll hardly go for Kerry, will it? <laughs> I, th- I think Noel has the Kerry flag out in the front garden there on the old ball. Yeah, to that of fucking blowing away here, I'm afraid. Long time ago. <laughs> Just off. Um, yeah, I, I, I slightly go against the boys in it, but I, 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 um, I was very impressed with Man and all against Dublin. Um, my only, my only issue with Dublin, um, probably came down to McManus the last day. I felt. I felt, you know, he had an exceptional game for 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 a guy of his age, and I just felt that, you know, he 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 found room very easy against him, and I'm just wondering, and I and I might be wrong here, but I'm just wondering, uh, like, have Dublin the legs on, on the stretch, you know, and um, they knew flip it over to Kerry. I'm not overly impressed with Kerry, I'll be honest, but uh, like the lad said, you know, it it it's, it comes down to fucking one man, and I never. You know, in this day and age, like the lads know, you know, with blanket defences and all that, you know, you'd you'd feel that an individual couldn't have that much of a say in a game, but he actually does. So, um, I I'm slightly give it to Kerry in 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 the sense that I I feel they might have the legs for Dublin, but um, being honest with you, I I think it's going to be very tight. It's going to be very very tight. Um. But I'm slightly, slightly it breaks my heart to say it, but it's, I'm slightly going for Kerry in this one, slightly. Only covering yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a very interesting one. I would have felt because we would have done a bit on this last week against Dublin, and we would have said that Dublin's nowhere near as good as the way up from six, eight years ago. Like Paul Flynn hasn't been mm-hmm. replaced. Bernard Brogan. Um, who else? Keen O'Sullivan, Philly McMahon, they're Ono Gara. Okay, they're the players we would we were talking about before the Monaghan game to see at Monaghan a chance. We felt they had, and we were we mm. there was only a hair teeth in it. And then on the Kerry side of it, we as well now thinking this week they're not as good as the Ware. Would they were oh. nothing like the Kerry team of the Northeast, Shea Brothers, Galvin, um who else? O'Mahony, oh, Jamie Scanlon, all that, all the Mike Frank, all that crew. No one here is good, so it's 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 going to be hard. It's it could be a flick of the kind between mm-hmm. it's hard to know, it's hard to know. So definitely. definitely. Um, no, we'll um, mm-hmm. no, we'll, we'll wrap her up there, lads. Thanks for coming on, and um, hopefully someone watching this when we get it posted up online or whatever might see it, might share it, and people might learn from it. So thanks for joining in, lads. Sound. No problem. Thanks, Stephen. Well, okay, all the best. Lads. All the best. Cheers, lads. All right, right lads. Thanks. Take it easy. Bye, lads. I'll see. Bye, bye.